WNBF, a Thursday morning. It's April 19th, 2012. I'm Bob Joseph. Live and local, you're listening to Binghamton now, and we welcome to the program Republican presidential candidate Ron Paul. Good morning, Dr. Paul. Good morning. Nice to be with you. And you're joining us right now from Ithaca. You've got a a rally that's planned uh, for Ithaca in just a few hours. Right. At Cornell, we expect to have a nice crowd. Well, tell me why you persist. You you continue to have uh, a, a strong and some enthusiastic support uh, in in uh, much of the country, especially among young people. Why do you keep on going even at this late date, where where some people, the mainstream pundits and um, mm-hmm. uh, the, the the so called, if if one were to use Sarah Palin's uh, comment, the lamestream media all have pretty much said, "Hey, it's going to be a, a, a competition in November between Mitt Romney and Barack Obama." So why do you pers- persist? Well, there's just a little over half of the votes have been counted, so. Uh I know my supporters wouldn't be all that happy to say, why why be a quitter and drop out of the race when we haven't even counted the votes? And uh, there's a lot of, uh, you know, unknown circumstances that could happen actually in the count uh, as these delegates work their way through the uh, through the process. And the crowds get bigger rather than smaller. You know, if, uh, if the people thought this was over, they'd quit coming. Uh, uh, the rallies are big, and uh, when the campaign needs funds, uh, the individuals uh, send money and uh, to a significant degree, and it's small donations. So the enthusiasm actually is growing. The need for a uh, change in, in our government, a change from both the status quo that the Republicans propose, the other candidates, as well as the Democrats, you know, continuation of the war and not looking into the Federal Reserve and not really cutting any spending and being unconcerned about an attack on our civil liberties, uh, there's a large number of people who want to hear this message and they would like to see some serious attention paid to these problems. What's your uh, perception of of the Republican leadership? They seem to be uh, very content generally at this point to ignore you, ignore your candidacy, and and basically that has been pretty much the philosophy from the beginning, that even though you've uh, uh, generated a significant amount of support uh, in some parts of the country, among some groups, they almost seem to regard you as some sort of mosquito that they'd like to swat away. Yeah, it, it sort of should be a mixed bag for them because they talk about having a big tent and building the party, and they know the hardcore Republican base is not enough to win an election. So they're really in a quandary because, uh, uh, quite frankly, everybody knows that more than half of my support at these rallies come from non traditional Republicans. But uh, too many Republicans say, well, we don't want these Ron Paul people coming in and taking over the party. But if they want to win the election, they have to have an appeal to the independents. You have to win some Democratic votes. But uh, our rallies are very much, uh, uh, you know, uh, showing up with people, you know, from the Democratic side as well as the independents. So uh, I, I don't know how they're in a dilemma, too, because uh, they don't want to give us credibility, and yet they can't uh, live without us. So they they think just sort of ignoring us and ignoring the problems and just saying, well, we'll go along with, with this. We'll talk about maybe balancing the budget in 30 years or something like that, and the fiscal conservatives are going to be content about it. And not and not offering a foreign policy that makes a little bit more sense than perpetual war and perpetual spending money overseas as the policemen of the world, the American people, especially these young people, they see no sense in this. It's a con- major contribution to our, our problems, and it's unsustainable. Do you expect to have any kind of role at the Republican National Convention? It's always possible, but I'm not anticipating uh, that uh, there, it's going to be a very welcome participation. If, if, they, if there is a major participation, it will be the, due just to public pressure on it. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of controversies going on in the states now how at times we you know get excluded there's a major problem for us up in alaska where we had a very good chance of winning a, a good block of uh 
of delegates, and uh, it looks like we could be actually locked out of going to the state convention. So those kind of things we have to deal with. And uh, but uh, I think public response is important for us to have a, a public showing and, and support. And it might not only be the, the number of delegates, it, it just may well be, uh, you know, what percentage of the population, uh, which is much bigger than, than uh, we might uh, have in the Republican primary. That is what counts, uh, because they can, it's the independent move. It's, it's the hardcore base of the Democratic Party and the Republican Party. They don't decide election. They're just there, and they're sort of the, the 20 to 30 percent. They're just sort of there, and nobody really budges them, but... The rest are up for grabs, and I think that's where we have our, our best support. It's also the reason why I can do as well, and sometimes better than Romney, when my name is put up against the president. What kind of relationship or rapport do you have with Mitt Romney? I would say it's, it's, it's uh, quite good in the sense on a social basis. Uh, we've gotten to know him and his wife and his kids. We see them, uh, you know, a good many times on the campaign trail, especially at the debates. It's always been very, very friendly, but it's usually social. You know, we know there are five boys and, and generally, no, we don't know them personally always, but we know what they do. I know one of them's a medical student and, and that sort of thing. But when it comes to politics, uh, you know, uh, his answer to the, the question, were quite different than mine, and he has a different foreign policy, and uh, he doesn't say much about the Federal Reserve, but he's not insisting, as our supporters insist, that we need to rein in the Federal Reserve and their ability to bail out their friends and create money out of thin air and finance big government. So our, our differences are pretty significant on, in a political sense. When's the last time you were actually in touch with him, that you actually had uh, a chance to speak with Governor Romney? Well, I have to think about it, but my first guess, it was probably uh, at our last debate, you know, and that's been, you know, several weeks now. So if the uh, party's nominee turns out to be Mitt Romney, are are you going to be in a position uh, looking forward to November to be able to support him in a, a contest against Barack Obama? Well, that's that's a real challenge. Uh, you know, I always uh, already see some of his statements mellowing a little bit. It depends on on what happens, but uh, just as I described our differences, it makes it real hard for me to not lose credibility. I say, okay, we fought you all along, and so we're going to endorse somebody that uh, endorses everything that I don't approve of. You know, uh, when it comes to foreign policy and civil liberties. I'm very concerned about what this president has done, assuming that he has a uh, authority to assassinate American citizens and arrest American citizens with the military and put them in prisons uh, without even talking to an attorney. Those are very dangerous trends, so uh, I'd have to know a lot more about what his real position is on those issues. Are there signs to you that uh, Mitt Romney is uh, starting to employ perhaps that so-called etch-a-sketch strategy where uh, now now that in in the eyes of Romney and many Republicans, the um, the campaign for the nomination is over and, and the focus is more on the general election that he is uh, attempting to, in some ways, shake things up sh- like an etch-a-sketch and, and perhaps reinvent himself uh, a, a new model, Mitt Romney, in time for the general mm-hmm. election? Yeah, the Etch-A-Sketch is a a new term applied to something that's been going on for as long as I've ever been involved or remember anything about politics. You run to your base in the primary, you always move to the middle in the general. The Democrats do it and the Republicans do it. Uh, so it, it's just a new term, but that happens all the time, you know. Uh, uh, I, I'm, you know, I think we could find some things where Obama did exactly the same thing in the in the last election, and uh, the, and even now, uh, Obama's uh, tune is changing a little bit. Uh, and I heard somebody on TV today accuse him, you know, he sounded more like a Republican. You know, he said, maybe we need any more free markets and things like that. So I think that's commonplace. I think you can expect it from both. Uh, generally, they don't uh, uh, accuse me of, uh, of of moving around, depending on which audience I'm talking to. You know, um, New York State Republicans are having their big annual dinner this evening in in New York City. It's, I think, a $1,000-a-plate dinner, so all of the... 
not all, but many of the high-profile Republicans in New York State, and along with, I, I believe, Newt Gingrich, are planning to be there at um, at a, a fancy hotel in Manhattan. Well, you're going to be spending some quality time, not just uh, this afternoon, but this evening in upstate Ithaca, New York. Yeah, and I think that's sort of the way people see our campaign, because we will be talking to a lot of people, and many of them will be uh, donors. But they usually, every time we have what they call the money bomb, when we need to raise money, and we just had one, we raised uh, almost a million and a half dollars in a couple of days, they're sending in $25. I think the average donation is like $52. Uh, so those those are the kind of people that come out uh, you know, to the rallies and, to, and for the support that we get. So we're, it, it, characteristically, we wouldn't uh, be uh, generally identified with uh, uh, a, a thousand dollar a plate dinner in New York City. I know you do have uh, a private gathering. I, I guess it is a fundraising gathering starting shortly. A, a little lunch with some of your uh, uh, ardent supporters uh, coming up in Ithaca before tonight's public rally. Right, that is correct. Let's have a little luncheon. So, where do you go from here? Uh, if you spend a, a few more hours here in upstate New York, uh, where do your attentions turn over the next several days? Well, the very next thing we do is we tonight after the rally here, we'll fly to Pittsburgh to go to the University of Pittsburgh. And Pittsburgh is my original hometown. I was born and raised in Pittsburgh. I finished my medical training at the University of Pittsburgh in OBGYN. So we're looking forward to that. And uh, then uh, next, next, oh, well, well, by uh, I think it's on by Sunday, we fly back up into Philadelphia. We're scheduled to have a big rally uh, in Philadelphia on on, uh, on Sunday. See, the campaign is placing uh, a few more uh, ads or an ad by uh, in Rhode Island of all places. <laughs> right, and I was there last night, and uh, we had a very nice turnout there, and a lot of enthusiasm. So you think you're coming uh, away from New York with with some delegates? Oh, I, I think so, but uh, you know it remains to be seen. So we'll have to wait and see how the voting goes. And in in terms of overall, your your impressions of the way the campaign has gone over the last several months is this pretty much the way you expected it, or is the the support you're seeing at at rallies uh, a bit stronger than you had anticipated? Actually, it's stronger, especially since, uh, you know, the way it's, uh, our campaign's been written off and ignored and all. You think all of a sudden, uh, in a conventional sense, that's when all your money dries up. I, I, I know that Gingrich is having trouble raising money, but that never happens. It seems to happen to us. You know, the pressure is always on, don't slow up, keep going, we will send you the money, and they do turn out. So, uh, you know, it'll be pretty hard to, uh, ever back away from the enthusiasm that is being expressed by the supporters. Well, I imagine you're looking forward then to um, greeting the the, uh, crowd. I I understand several thousand people are expected for tonight's rally in Ithaca. Yes, we'll be looking forward to it. Dr. Ron Paul, my thanks for your time this morning as uh, you go forward with your campaign for President of the United States. I wish you well during your remaining time here in upstate New York, and hopefully we'll have a chance to speak with you again at some point in the future. Thanks for having me on.